Wake up. Behold the smoking gun. Actual direct evidence that E.T. is monitoring us from below the sea. This film is that. This is my rebuttal to Eric Weinstein, who's my man, and I respect the fuck out of him. But recently he said this very reasonable take on ufology, particularly ocean-based craft. There are two basic doors into the this phenomenon. One of, is indirect evidence, and the other is direct evidence. And if you ask me, if you go by direct evidence, um, with everybody owning a camera in their pocket, you have to say that this is nonsense. <laughs> Because there is no direct evidence that's high quality. There's no high quality data in the public domain. That's right. So let's just say that from the direct evidence perspective, this is nonsense. It doesn't exist. It's very silly. Okay. Now you switch your lens. You say, there seems to be an overwhelming amount of indirect evidence. Like psychotically overwhelming. And I was unprepared for this until I started looking at it. Mm -hmm. And I took it personal. I do get it. But I believe he's mistaken, and this is why. This one film. Behold direct evidence of E.T. visitation. They're coming from the ocean, not from space. That's ridiculous. So I'm just going to let the film roll in its entirety and uh, narrate a couple points. In April of 2013, U.S. Border Patrol and the Office of Homeland Security were patrolling the coast of Aguadilla, Puerto Rico, hunting for drug runners, and they filmed a gold standard case of ocean-based E.T., no cover-up, no conspiracy theorizing required. It's great. Because I actually don't like that shit. This film, the tracking data, and the thermal images originated from the Office of Homeland Security themselves. They didn't attempt to cover it up. Not their problem. In fact, Border Patrol simply passed the film to a team of analysts working with the SCU, the Scientific Coalition for UAP Studies, a group of approved scientists, military analysts, and investigators. So we have an official SCU report that was released after a two-year study of the three-minute, 54-second film. They analyzed separately and individually 7,027 frames and had access to all the footage, radar, thermal data, anything they wanted. They had access to the pilots, and they released the port report to the public. That's how it should be. When I say direct evidence, I don't use that word lightly. Rich Hoffman, one of the two co-founders of SCU, a 26-year systems analyst for the U.S. Army, said in a statement, this is the official government statement talking here. He said this on the conclusion of his research. Well, this is his wordings. Well, what flies like this? What splits into two? What has this color temperature or this temperature range that we're talking about? Obviously, we looked into it, and there's one bit in the beginning of it where it looks like a tumbling bloom, but you don't know. And that's how we look at it in the visual range. In the thermal range, it could be completely different. That could be the temperature changing around. Did it look like it had any kind of indication of a propulsion system? But guess what? The wind speeds, which are kind of an indication of a propulsion system, did that, that didn't add up. Because guess what? The wind speeds at the altitude that this thing was at were anything from 15 to 18 miles an hour heading from the north to east into the southwest. This object was racing through into the wind. Well, okay. Again, on propulsion, this is still his words, didn't see any propulsion systems. And then we said, could it be a balloon? And what was that blowing looking thing in the thermal? Well, we have a friend of ours. We reached out to Dave Walsh, who's an FLIR technician and even had the West Cam camera. And he went out and literally took pictures of a balloon with the same camera, Mylar balloon. Basically, thermal match wasn't there. They couldn't get anything near. That's me talking. They tried birds, no thermal match. So he says, you keep going down the list of all the things it could potentially be. And one thing that you know, how many things split into two identical pieces? It is a comprehensive review of thermal, visual, and sensory data related to an unusual series of events in and around the Aguadilla, Puerto Rico airport in April, 2013. Later, when interviewed, Hoffman compared that UFO to the famous Tic Tac incident a 2004 encounter off the coast of Southern California involving the USS Nimitz Carrier Group. So in conclusion, this is actually the, uh, the conclusion from the government. The object witnessed by CBP and tower personnel recorded on the CBP DHC-8 aircraft thermal imaging system is of unknown origin. There's no explanation for an object capable of traveling underwater at over 90 miles an hour with minimal impact as it enters the water 
through the air at 120 miles per hour at low altitude through a residential area without navigational lights and finally to be capable of splitting into two separate objects no bird no balloon no aircraft no one no known drones nothing that's straight from the horse's mouth from the country itself there you go eric that's your direct evidence <laughs>